accessing archive. Hydra was founded on the belief that humanity could not be trusted with its own freedom. What we did not realize was that if you try to take that freedom, they resist. The war taught us much. Humanity needed to surrender its freedom willingly. Okay, so you heard him say people don't give up their freedoms willingly. So first I'll just look at this real quick. Black people are being murdered and brutalized by the police. Donation to the ACLU. I wouldn't, but anyway. Um, the the um, top 10 abuses of power since 9-11 is my point, okay? Like they said, they, they people don't give up their freedoms willingly. They'll fight for it. But if you scare them enough with the 9-11, then you can have warrantless wiretapping, wire torture, kidnapping, and detention, the growing surveillance society, which we have now, Abuses of the Patriot Act, which the Patriot Act, I believe, was unconstitutional in itself. Governmental sec uh, secrecy, real ID, no fly, no fly and selectee list, political spying, abuses of material witness statue, attacks on academic freedom. These are just some of the major things that are occurring because of the terrorist attacks and the things so the legislations that have been put in place based on these um, terrorist threats right are an abuse of power of the government because constitutionally they don't have the right to violate your privacy but because you're afraid you give them that right because you're afraid of a terrorist attack you get it after the war, S.H.I.E.L.D. was founded, and I was recruited. The new Hydra grew, a beautiful parasite inside S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay, so you heard him say that um, Hydra grew as a parasite inside of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now that's analogous to the Illuminati growing as a parasite inside of the Freemasons, okay? Illuminati members join Freemason lodges to recruit members of their own competing secret society. This is um, nine questions about the Illuminati, too afraid to ask. You know, this stuff is pretty mainstream these days. So I was trying to show you that real quick, just to show you something real quick. And then I kind of went down a rabbit hole and I might as well share it with y'all since I just ran down it real quick. So I was gonna make the, I was gonna say how it's a conspiracy that um, Adam Weinsoff, as you can see, a German law, a German, who we talking about, Nazis, right? Who believed in English, blah, 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 was a person who supposedly started the Illuminati of the 1700s, right? And the conspiracy is that uh, that um, Adam Weinsoff, Weinsoff replaced George Washington, and whom we know as George Washington, the pictures we see is Adam Weinstein. So that made me think because as I'm, my point is that the Illuminati does not necessarily equal a Freemason. We put everything, um, we put the whole evil stuff on Freemasons. And I know I even say it a lot, but I've said in, in previous videos, not all Freemasons are in the Illuminati. You know, it's not, they're not equal. Okay. It's a different, it's a different group of people with a negative or with a evil, if you will, agenda, and they just use free Freemasonry to hide the other stuff that they do. You understand? Freemasonry in its in itself is not necessarily a bad thing. It's simply science. It's simply a science. You know, it's really just a a watered down version of more science. Really, to be honest, all they do is learn f uh, metaphysics and a different version of history that you don't that you not accustomed that you don't hear. Which and don't, don't even be the right history, especially not for Prince Hall Masons. Yeah, they still think they came over their own ships. But anyway, um, so my point was to show you that George Washington in himself was a uh, was a Freemason, right? So we know that because he always throwing a hidden hand in all in a lot of his pictures, right? But I mean, he even says it in some writing or something. But the conspiracy is that you know Adam Weinsop replaced 
George Washington. And then I went to this site, and I'm going to show you that conspiracy real quick. It was, it was just a post that I don't want to replace George Washington. Bam, that's Adam That's Adam Winesop. That's George Washington on our dollar bill. Okay? So, they like, you know what I'm saying? Five years, George Washington changed from this to this. Okay, so the dude going in on that, you know, it's a conspiracy. They actually um, did something about this, did something referring to this on The Simpsons. And I know how The Simpsons is, but they, um, you know, they um, predicting the future and all this and all that. You know, they told some truths about the past that maybe it's not in our history books, you understand? Like this. Okay, so that took me here, and I'm just going to show you this before I... Uh, finish this up this site right here got a whole bunch of pictures of george washington and you just look at them do look different in all the pictures it's like crazy like okay like them look the same let me tell you let me let me tell you okay that look one they look different there they look different there they look different there you know and all these are supposed to be portraits or paintings of him and, and busting things that were done while he was either alive or had just died okay right there like he looks completely different in these pictures it's weird you know what I'm saying? You should have a, a general idea of what a man looks like. And, you know, that should show in all these pictures, but he looks different. So that's the conspiracy there. Now, this post right here, though, is on some whole other shit. And that ain't even really what I want to talk about in this video. But, goddamn, it's like they're going in on this conical hat, which is a, 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 a figuring hat, which is a form of the other face. It's all the same thing. But in, but they talking about how that's that could be um what we know who we know is George Washington. You see what I'm saying? Because they claiming that it could be I don't want to So they going into a whole bunch of other stuff and they talking about. And I'm just gonna hit y'all with this just to show you since I'm here. I haven't really just read all this. I'm gonna read it. The know nothing part. I never even heard of this. So somebody making come school me in the, in the comments. I'd appreciate it. Um. But what I wanted to show is they, they show on here where they built, when they built this um, this uh, obelisk and that's in uh, Washington, D.C. Why should they show on here? Okay, let me find it. Pyramid. Damn, where is it at? Do go in. I'm like, I don't know what. Okay, here it is. So this is the construction of the obelisk in Washington, D.C. And look down here at the bottom see it's like a little shaft or something so he's like my next question pertains to the above fellow what's that small passage i circled what is that did they build that if they build that what for somehow i think it was already there so his premise is and i heard a brother uh man i can't say who the more is who got this channel who, who been putting this out a lot but i know i said the duke of tears talked about it a lot i seen it originally probably like a year a year ago from I can't remember, but somebody, somebody, you know, showed me. It was a more who showed me and referred it to me. But how basically we had all this ancient technology here, and we had, and like, um, if you get into what the pyramids, see, that's why I'm even trying to go into all this. But if you get into what the pyramids were really were, they really were power plants. Um, go watch the uh, documentary called The Pyramid Code. It's a five part documentary. They get into that on there. Uh, I think they get into that on there, but anyway, it's on YouTube. You look it up. The pyramids of power plants. Okay, so and we'll here he talking about how they got all these uh, wirings and things, and these metal things on top of buildings, and what um, what we know as fireplaces back in the day were really weren't fireplaces. They were really antennas that the people used to power the house based on the free energy given off by the pyramids. So that's what, so that's that's another conspiracy I really wasn't trying to hit you with in this video. But fuck it, you know, I'm gonna give you everything I know. So, you know, I figured I might as well share that. That's another thing. The whole the whole point is that you they want you to believe that they came and built up America, but the truth is that America was already built up. Like, a lot of the so-called Indians wasn't necessarily living in, in you know, all of them wasn't TP living in teepees and things of that nature. So that's what that's what he proved. I may I'm, I maybe I should put this in the uh, comments just to share. I mean in the uh, description. Y'all yeah, can come read this. I'm I'm probably read some of it. But yeah. So you see, so bringing it back, <laughs> Hydra is 
was is basically the Illuminati. That's what they're telling you in this movie. Okay, the the truth is in the movies. Okay, that is the point. All right, so look. For seventy years, Hydra has been secretly feeding crisis, reaping war, and when history did not cooperate, history was changed. Okay, so you see, said that um. If history didn't fit what they said, history history was changed, right? So, one in one way, history has been changed in a sense is our mentality as a people. We've been um, con, uh, coerced to to accept the narrative that we are all from Africa and we needed civil rights, and that came about with the civil rights movement which as you can see began in the late 1940s, which is right around the time the Operation Paperclip came about, okay? Can't be a coincidence, all right? So, um, I'm gonna let Bobby Hemmett explain to you what, the, what, what they did with the Civil Rights Movement so you can understand how they go about changing narratives which essentially changes history. You know? So the concept here is that there's, some, there's a conspiracy. There's a conspiracy. Give you an example. They just arrested um, Dr. Young. Now, you know, and he gave him 16 years. Um, gave him 16, gave him 16 years. Um, now he now he, he his slate wasn't on the other clean. But they gave, when they arrested him, they gave the cops. They gave the cop who arrested him, they gave him an award. And the cops said, well, you know, you don't need to be thinking me. I could not have done this without the ADL, Anti-Defamation League, which is the Jewish, you know, aspect. And remember, they busted them a couple of years ago in the early 90s for spying on people. And they said, well, you know, they said, you know, 70% of our information on black people and all types of things we get, we get it from the ADL. So here it is, we have a people that, that, that their job, is to undermine our every step, even how we progress and advance, even to the aspect of um, the whole civil rights movement, which they finance, which they finance and which they claim, yeah. the whole NAACP. We can go as far as to say, look, here's the people that's a bunch of punks. They wanted to build, make laws in this society that they can go about with the freedom of just being something different. They couldn't do the movement themselves, so what they did was is they started a movement, the civil rights movement for Jews, gays, and every other interest group, and they used black people as the spearheads to do it. And in the end result, we were the least ones to benefit from it. They said that the homosexuals benefited from the movement more than we did. White women, um, 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 white women, it's just like um, um, Dick Gregory was saying, nah, because he, he did a speech down in Atlanta um, during the 60th, the, the 40 year anniversary of the March on Washington, D.C. And they had a bunch of white people in on it. He was like, well, I want y'all to know something. He said, before Martin Luther King and all this thing went down, he said, um, you must know this right now. He said, right now, you can be an airplane stewardess and you can be 90 years old, titty sagging down to your damn knees. He said, but before you was, before you, before all that happened, you had to be 20 something years old and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, give me just giving an example on how these civil rights laws paved the way for these people to get justice. And it was all, and I'm looking at this thing now, it was an all a dramatic scheme to use us to get hit over the head so that they can go about with ease. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful story. It gets even deeper. Hydra created a world so chaotic that humanity is finally ready to sacrifice its freedom to gain its security. Okay, so how did they do that? By a series of false flags. So let's look at what a false flag is. The truth about false flags from Nazi Germany to the Vietnam War. Wonder why they go to Nazi Germany first, right? Propagandists, that's what I've been telling you. 
On the night of the 31st of August, 1939, several co covert Nazi operatives dressed as Polish soldiers stormed the Dutt Radio's tower in Germany on the Germany-Poland border. They broadcast a short anti-German message in, in Polish before leaving. The soldiers left behind the bodies of pro Polish, German, former, and several unidentified that are concentration camp prisoners. The former and the prisoners had been murdered and dressed up in German uniforms. The attack was part of a series of covert actions along the Polish border that the Nazis would use to justify Germans, Germany's attack on Poland the following day. That was a classic false flag operation. Okay, so let me tell you what you, a modern oper, a false flag operation is. Okay, they tell you that Muslim terrorists hijacked a plane and flew it into a building. So then that makes you afraid of Muslim, of Islamic countries. So so then they said it was a guy named Bin Laden who did this, and then a year later they go to war with Iraq because Saddam Hussein. Um, was in the same room as Bin Laden at one point in time, thousand, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, at one time in a whole lifetime, or some old bullshit ass reason that they never really explained. But for some odd reason, they went after Saddam Hussein after originally supposed to be, um, what's the guy name? Either way it go, they both of FBI agents, both of them, Bin Laden and, um, uh, Saddam, they all, they both were because this is all a false flag operation. This is my point. So one of the most famous incidents. Okay, hold on. So the meaning. Oh, now watch this. This is this is very cool. So what is meant by the term false flag? Originally, the phrase was coined for the practice of pirate ships flying the colors of other nations to deceive merchant ships into thinking they were dealing with friendly vessels. That is crazy. That makes so much sense where the concept comes from. You know, they put up a fake, a fake, you know, flag of, of Spain or some shit, and then some Spanish merchants would come up to them thinking it's all good, and then they rob them. That's crazy. Over time, the term false flag came to be applied to any covert operations that sought to shift the responsibility on a different party from one carrying it out, as was the case with the Nazis at Glen blah, 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 blah. The United States and Great Britain joined organized false flag operations during the 1953 Iran Iranian coup. Of course, it's just the Nazis who stand accused of carrying out false flag operations prior to invasion in the 1930s. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to read all this, but you get the gist, okay? The biggest false flag operation of all time was the 9-11 attacks. Too many online conspiracy theories, okay? Well, there you go. I'm one of them. Fuck you. Um, so this goes into that. It goes more, more into that. But this right here shows... Five confirmed false flag operations on how to spot and how to spot them in the future. The constant false flag operation became almost pretty stigmatized in recent years because of the 9/11 Truther movement. All right, so they're going through that, and I want to show you one of these. Operation Gladico was a post World War II program established by the CIA, possibly Britain to come to. Com communi communism in Europe by whatever means necessary. The two decade operation of CIA state. Okay, I'm not. You get my point is that confirmed false flags. They do this. Cointel Pro is a series of clandestine. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> illegal FBI projects that infiltrated domestic political organizations who discredit and smear them. This included critics from Viet of the Vietnam War, civil rights leader Martin Luther King, Robert activists and journalists. Journalists, okay, okay, playing both sides, family. This is the point. We know Cointel Pro, despite being informed, the discontinued, yeah, right. New uh, per, 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 permutations of Cointel Pro have persisted, including the present day efforts and undermining activities. In fact, a 2012 article by The Guardian described FBI's crackdown on the uh, Occupy movement as totally integrated. Cooperative state representative of dissidents, whatever the fuck that means. Basically, what they're saying is it's still active. Quantel Pro is still active. Okay. So, lastly, 
to bring it home. This was Democrats getting to heat exchange with Pamport hearing, do you believe the coronavirus is a hoax? A hoax, false flags, same thing. All right, so watch this. Mulvaney told the Conservative Political Action Conference that the coronavirus was the hoax of the day. Uh, do you agree with Donald Trump's chief of staff, Mulvaney, that the coronavirus uh, is the hoax of the day? The State Department is doing everything it can to protect American citizens you, around the do world. Do you believe coronavirus is the I, hoax of the day? I'm not going to comment on what so others you say. You, you, I'm I, just asking you, do you I, believe I, the coronavirus? Just, he could easily say, no, of course not. What do you mean, hoax? What are you talking about? This is a this is a virus that's killing people. He shouldn't he, he shouldn't have to deflect this question. It should be simple. What do you mean? Hoax what? Are you serious? People are dying. That should be his answer. People he's answering. I'm just hoax? telling you what the Secretary of State is doing. Do you believe the coronavirus is a hoax? We're working to keep people safe. You can't even answer that question. Yeah, it's I a mean, very it's not even look, a gotcha you're, question. You're, you're you believe the coronavirus is, is a, it's a hoax. A, it's a gotcha moment. It's not useful. Take, is the coronavirus a hoax? Can you just answer that question? We're, we're taking it seriously. This is a, this is a, right. this is are a you, serious. At 12:15 today, are you in fact yourself president. speaking at CPAC? The, at 12:15 today, are you speaking? Yes, at CPAC? I am. I'm planning. All right. So you can only give two hours to this bipartisan group of members of Congress, and instead of answering questions on life and death issues from a bipartisan group of America's representatives. You're going to go talk to a special interest group. Yes. You, sir, represent all Americans, not a special interest group. It is shameful. You can't even answer basic questions. I yeah, yield back. Time is so you peeped that? He said, are you going to see a special interest group? You represent the Americans, not a special interest group. The special interest group is the lobbyists who pay these people to pass these laws. That's what he's, that's what he's talking about. And he's putting it right in. How can you not answer that question? Is it a hoax? No, it's not a hoax, man. What are you talking about? This stuff is real. What do you mean? This is this is a, a pandemic. No, he deflected the question because it's a hoax. And he don't want to be on the record saying it's not when he know it is. Plain and simple. So look, finishing it up. Once the purification process is complete, Hydra's new world order will arise. We won, Captain. You. So, we know that the whole concept, because I'm looking at, 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 at um, I'm looking at um, the uh, PBS, and I said, PBS must should be called a World War II channel. <laughs> Damn it, every time I turn on, they got some tanks, and German shit is going on all the time. I'm like, well, my goodness, even they, the yeah, even the history channel, I'm saying, even they, even the European, got, more history of warfare than World War II, being that most of their history is that of warfare. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So hey, but it's just over and over and then you realize that this is some type of pro-Israel type of government that want to keep that going as the focus of the people, of the chosen people, that they got to keep talking about a fake suffering. So I don't take the premises that the Holocaust did not happen or the, 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 the European Holocaust. I don't take it didn't happen. I, I realize that um, 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 what most of the, the Jewish rabbis say, that six million people didn't die, it was more like 600,000, if that many. And they put the six million as to indicate their pain and suffering. So they even got enough sense to know that when you talk about pain and suffering, you need to celebrate it on a high level. Um, and we need to just do that now just to know that by us being buffoons and fools didn't come about by some racial inferiority. But I remember when O.J. Simpson, when they first found him innocent, and Johnny Cochran came on, and they wanted him to answer questions about a racist, how can you say that, uh, this, that, that this white boy who found the gloves, whatever his name was, Mark Furman would be on the on the level of Adolf Hitler. He like to us, a racist motherfucker like that is on the level of Adolf Hitler. Hell, even more so. They got a tradition of damn near over a hundred years of this doggone stuff, just lynching alone, and you got six years of some shit you playing. But he said one thing. He said the Jews. Well, he talking about those European Jews. The Israelis <laughs> did not corner the market on 
pain and suffering. So what does this mean is you got people that literally say that we are going to go down as the people that corner the market on pain and suffering, which historically don't even add up, so that they can somehow fit themselves into a mythology of a people that the original mythology created out of Kemet wasn't even those people. You see what I'm saying? But they want to fit themselves. Meanwhile, we are the descendants of those people that those particular scriptures line up with. And they're jealous of us because of that, because they know that the people of the pain and suffering in the wretched state, our shit is unending. That's happening every five minutes. A nigga got a story for your ass. <laughs> <laughs> when I first went to college and stuff, my mama dropped me off and forgot about this. I said, okay, good. I got that nigga out the house and sent that nigga no money. <laughs> I'm up there complaining and stuff. And the first day was one of the guys said, hey, man, I hate to tell you this, but you're in the black race. Uh, we don't need to hear no sad stories. Pick a goddamn number, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and I was better off than them because I was raised middle class. They were like, pick a nigga number, nigga. You want to see some stuff, you know what I'm saying? If we go, you know, and it was interesting. I, I remember in 1990, one that was, uh, 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 I was uh, with, with this gentleman, one of my ex-girlfriends, and we was, we was at the underground at night, and she was going all off about some stuff about, you know, just a personal family business or whatever, and she was all teary-eyed and all that, and the nigga sitting beside her was like, God damn it, you ain't got no problem. I'm a fucking prostitute. <laughs> and everybody got quiet on that. We can't argue with that right there. <laughs> We can't always say, my mama was a damn prostitute. And I'm like, well, see, pick a number. We got a sad story every five minutes. But the point about it is our suffering is unending. So on one hand, you have these particular people, and it means here that we're talking about a conspiracy. Where you say, well, damn, can the, can the crackers let up any? But then again, on the other hand, on the other hand, it's almost a jealousy. Because my point here is if you really want to fake the scriptures, you would bring the people of pain and suffering to a lofty height and say, well, they can't be the people. Because look how good they're doing. But then again, on the other hand, do you know any damn Jews that ain't doing good? You know what I'm saying? Just the concept of Jews, motherfuckers got money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>